Thank the gentleman from New York. The chair will now recognize himself for five minutes of questions. It strikes me that the law can require action or forbid action. The law can forbid the possession of child pornography. The law can, in some instances, require you to file an income tax return. Mr. Lazarus, is the chief executive constitutionally capable of ignoring both categories of law? Well, as I uh, said several times, um, Congressman Gowdy, um, the president cannot uh, refuse to apply or enforce a law for policy reasons. Well, uh, let, let's analyze that for a second. Uh, Congress decided um, in its uh, collective wisdom that if you possess X amount of a controlled substance, you are going to get X amount of time in prison. You may like mandatory minimums. You may not like them. This administration summarily dispensed with that law. So my question to you, again, is can the chief executive fail to enforce categories of law that are both permissive and mandatory? Well, it is well established that uh, the executive branch has uh, prosecutorial discretion uh, to decline enforcement. And what are the limits of that prosecutorial discretion? Y you know, very frankly, I, I, I'm not an expert on that. Well, let me ask you this. Can the president, it, it, let's assume that a statute required you to show two pieces of identification to purchase a firearm. Can the chief executive knock that down to one? I guess I'd have to know a little bit more, but I, I would. It's a very simple fact not. pattern. I you have to show two that. forms of ID to possess or purchase a firearm, to purchase a firearm. Can the chief executive, under his pardon authority or his prosecutorial discretion authority, knock that down to just one form of identification? Well, there, I'm not aware of limits on the president's pardon authority. Um, so I, you would say he could? Under the pardon authority, the president can, can pardon just about anyone, not that he should. No. Even before well, the act is committed? That's, that's the, the reason for Can he do it before the act is committed? That's my question. I'm sorry? Can he do it before the act is committed? I, I, again, I'm, that's, another, I'm, that's, that's above my pay grade. I don't really know that. If the president can yeah. fail to enforce immigration laws, can the president likewise fail and to enforce would, election would laws? Whether the president can pardon someone before a prosecution is initiated or before an act? Uh, well, I think I know the answer to that question. Now, my question was before the act was committed. He certainly can before the prosecution. I don't my know. question is this. If you, can, if you can dispense with immigration laws or marijuana laws or mandatory minimums, can you also dispense with election laws? I, 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 again, I think we've, we've gone over this ground many times. Well, just humor me. Let's do it one more time. Can the president suspend election laws? No. Why not? If he can suspend mandatory minimum and immigration laws, why not election laws? Because we live, we live in, a, uh, in, a, in a government of laws, and the president is bound to obey them and apply them. Well, he's not applying the ACA, and he's not applying immigration laws, and he's not applying marijuana laws, and he's not applying mandatory minimums. What's the difference with election laws? We have a disagreement as to whether, in fact, he is applying those laws. Did My he? My view is that he is, that he is applying those laws. Did Eric Holder in, instruct his prosecutors to no longer follow the mandatory minimums with respect to charging decisions? Now, this, is, this is an area where I really don't know nearly as much as you do, Congressman. I, I don't, I, I'd find that shocking that anybody would not know more than I do on any topic. Who would you like me, you want me to ask I Professor Turley? That, that my impression is that he's not exactly doing what, what you've just said. That, that well, tell me how I'm wrong, because the, the, uh, Eric Holder sent out a memo that we are no longer going to put in the indictment the drug amounts. Do you agree with me that Congress can pass mandatory minimums? Constitutionally, yes. Do you agree that Congress can pass statutory maximums? Pardon me? Can, we, can, can Congress also pass statutory maximums? In other words, you can't get more than 30 years for a crime. Of course. Can, the, can, the, can a president uh, exceed a statutory maximum? Can he extinguish, did you say? No, can he exceed it? Can he exceed it? Well, he, how would he do that? I mean, keep, uh, keep someone in prison beyond his prison term. Well, if you can put him in prison for less time than Congress says is the law, can you also do it for more time than Congress says is the law? I don't, I, you know, I, I, it's really, uh, it's, it's not, this is kind of fruitless because it's, it's an area that I really don't know. Professor Turley, uh, 
what are the limits of prosecutorial discretion? And, and if the president can suspend immigration laws, marijuana laws, why not election laws? Well, I think that in some of these areas I can't imagine to be justified through prosecutorial discretion. It's not prosecutorial discretion to go into a law and say an entire category of people will no longer be subject to the law. That's a legislative decision. Prosecutorial discretion is a case-by-case -case decision that is made by the Department of Justice. When the Department of Justice starts to say, we're going to extend that to whole sections of laws, then they are engaging in a legislative act, not an act of prosecutorial discretion. Wherever the line is drawn, it's got to be drawn somewhere from here. It can't include categorical rejections of the application of the law to millions of people. Well, my time is up, but I, I, I would just tell you that uh, I always thought prosecutorial discretion was an individual prosecutor determining whether she or he has enough facts to, to uh, substantially uh, result in a conviction on a case-by-case -case basis. If a president is ignoring entire categories of the law, whether it be immigration, marijuana, mandatory minimum, the ACA, what is the remedy for the legislative branch? Well, first of all, the first part of that question is, as you may know, I do criminal defense work. I would never go to a prosecutor and say, I want your prosecutorial discretion to say that the entire class of which my, my client belongs cannot be subject to this law, because prosecutors would look at me and say, are you insane? I am not Congress. Uh, so I wouldn't even raise the question. Now, in terms of where we go from here, I, I'm not too sure, because the great concern I have for this body is that it's not only being circumvented, but it is also being denied the ability to enforce its inherent powers. Many of these questions are not close in my view. The president is outside the line. But it has to go in front of a court, and that court has to grant review. And that's where we have the most serious constitutional crisis I view in my lifetime. And that is this body is becoming less and less relevant. Uh, with that, we would recognize the General Lee from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee. Let me thank